evenly matched. Although I feel that looking at them, Andre has probably cut a fair amount of weight to make this 145 pound limit. Our referee, Steve Hodgett, about to get things underway here. You ready? Ready. Bye. And it is a go in our second match here tonight at Tezos. Who's number one? Now, don't be surprised if uh, Fabrizio Andre launches into a flying attack. We've seen him do it many times before. Even pulled off a, a world championship title in the Gi doing such not that long ago, Hal. Yeah, Fabrizio Andre has a very dynamic game. He is an absolute monster with triangles from every position, whether it is top, whether it is bottom, whether it is flying from on the feet. A very dynamic submission artist indeed, a big character as much as a... Uh, a fantastic competitor and it was a very nicely timed inside trip Kuchigari style putting Ramirez down on the mat and much like his teammates both Joko Hayes and Mika Galvao Fabrizio Andre also won the ADCC South American trials Joko Hayes won the 66 kilogram division in the first American South American trials and a week later Fabrizio Andre followed up by winning that same weight class at the second South American Trials, therefore qualifying three men from the same training room in Manaus, Brazil for the 2022 ADCC World Championships. So this, just about six weeks out, is a great opportunity for, for, for Fabricio Andre middle, to really show the American audience exactly what keep his jiu-jitsu is. Yeah, and what was really incredible about those ADCC Trials runs was just looking at his past experience in Nogi being Rather minimal, but it doesn't seem to matter here. Look at that incredible dump as Ruby Sandre establishes great Zippo control here. He said he was dynamic. That shot to the back and a very well timed pick up and Matt return there Stop. from Fabrizio Andre. Seems like a quick time out there. Oh, he's going to restart them in the center in that same riding kind of position from the rear body lock. But for Fabrizio Andre. Based on what we saw from that little wrestling exchange, I would say seems to have a clear strength advantage in this match. You've seen his arms, right? He's pretty <laughs> jacked. I mean, he's walking around. Yes, he's only five foot five, but he looks a lot bigger than 145 pounds, that's for sure. I'm sure that squeeze is coming in handy right about now as Andre looks to solidify this position a little more. Fabian doing his best to get out of danger, but Andre is not someone you get away from easily. Ramirez doesn't mind going up against people bigger and stronger than him, though. He's uh, he's competed in open weight matches many times. He's uh, he's a gamer, and he's doing his best here to try and clear those hooks and escape this back control, trying to get his back flat to the mat. But Fabrizio Andre, oh, there we go. Ramirez is up and out and to his feet. Okay. And Ramirez, he lost the decision to Max Hansen who outweighs him by a solid 20, 25 pounds just a couple of weeks ago on the Who's Next finale. But Ramirez went a full 15 minutes with somebody who was a full weight class bigger than him. Didn't seem to face him. So somebody who's only 10 pounds heavier than him, maybe not such a big deal. Yeah, I may feel more at home out here. It's also worth mentioning that in the first episode of WNX, Fabian went 40 minutes, I believe, with Andrew Tackett before eventually falling just short there. Another competitor who uh, outweighs him by about 20 pounds. Yeah, and there were a lot of escapes in that matchup as well. So you can tell that he's very confident in his defense and is, is going to try and find an opening when he can. Oh, he's a gamer for sure. For Fabian Ramirez, you know, coming out of Long Island and uh, training with a Sarah Jiu Jitsu team there. You know, he's based in, you know, well, he's from East Meadow, New Jersey, but training in Long Island, New York with Matt Sarah Jiu Jitsu team. One of the best established jiu-jitsu schools in that region the only a brown belt i say only I'm using a little air quotes only a brown belt in jiu-jitsu whereas fabrizio andre is a black belt but it's it's no gi does that really matter chase i think we've proven that that is uh not exactly but oh my goodness what a toss from fabrizio andre amazing use of the underhook the upper body control there it's stepping through huge hip toss Looks like Ramirez was going to land on his head, but managing to spin out and take that fall, that impact on his back. And you can see that uh, right here, Fabrizio Andre has a double top wrist lock control. He was looking for a kind of an Americana, but in forcing Ramirez to turn away, exposes that back. Man, that impact. That was such a big throw. That might have been one of the biggest throws we've ever seen here at WNO. 
Great work from Fabrizio Andre. Definitely getting ready for ADCC. You can see him putting the work on the feet, and it's showing here tonight. I know even though this is a submission-only match, let's make it uh, you know, very clear here, a reminder for our viewers that, all right, points don't exist in who's number one, but effective grappling is considered by our judges. So takedowns, control, pin control, all adds up when it comes to a decision. And right now, our judges favor, no surprise, Fabrizio Andre. Because should it go the full 15 minutes, as our first match did against Diogo Hayes against uh, Esteban Martinez, Chase, they're not just looking for submission attacks, they're looking for everything. No, it's a holistic approach here at WNO, and throws are, are very important, especially when it gets down to uh, razor-thin matches. But in, in this case right now, I think it's a considerable lead here for Hokage and Fabrizio Andre. Number of big takedowns. It was an attempt at a foot sweep. Fabrizio Andre, though, the one thing that he hasn't done so far, we're only five minutes into this 15-minute match, haven't really seen any significant submission attacks as yet. Still a lot of time left here as we just approach the nine-minute mark. And I think we want Fabrizio is really workshopping his wrestling. I think he wants to end up on the back, but he'd be happy with one more takedown, I think. Or two. As you say, plenty of time to work. These 15-minute matches, you will see the athletes pace themselves because a uh, 15 minutes of non-stop action with no break, it's, uh, it's quite a physical uh, f a test of endurance because, you know, jiu-jitsu is a, has many athletic demands, not just the cardiovascular, but the strength, the isometric strength, the explosiveness. It's very difficult to find those moments to rest. And Fabian Ramirez kind of backs up into the center of the mat. It looks like he wants to go forward, but every time he does, it looks like he's just running into a brick wall. But Andre barely budges. Again, uses the footwork to go directly to the back control. And now you see Ramirez oh, looking for a leg attack. It's a decent outside heel hook there. There was a look on Fabrizio Andre's face there for a moment. He didn't like that. That was a that was a decent look at an attack right there, Chase. Yeah, beautiful work from Fabian there to take the transition and put it in his favor. An unorthodox heel hook there, but well done to, to really uh, fire a shot across the brow there and know that he's still in this match. You know the one thing that you can say as well, because leg locks, they sometimes they can look effective and they could be a million miles away or vice versa. Sometimes it doesn't look much and the guys tap in. But a key element of judging the success of a leg lock and, and the effectiveness of it is look at the guy's face. Look at his reaction. Does he pa have that moment of panic flash across his face? How does he react? Is he calm in his response or is his response urgent? And I felt like that definitely was a decent leg attack from Ramirez, but that seems to have uh, ignited something in Hokage here because Andre is immediately back on the attack and in a very powerful position. Now we see a little more controlled approach from Andre. He's going to try and cook Ramirez just a little bit here, put some pressure on, tire him out. He knows he's got the tempo lead here. I think he would like to pass one more time, maybe start looking for the back again. One thing I, I did mention though is about Fabrizio Andre is that the second time that he's had a top position, he's had a, a controlling position, a pin, right. and yet didn't really do anything with it. You know, was there and, and was holding the position, but didn't even attempt to separate the arms away from the torso, didn't even attempt to work on the neck or, or even force Ramirez into a, a worse position where he could attack from. And I think. It is not enough to simply control your opponent here at Hosen Boulogne. We do want to see the submission attacks as well. And I would like to see Fabrizio Andre. Oh, no, nice ankle pick. His wrestling is so smooth. Yeah, really, really effortless work there. Just timing it perfectly. Again, ends up in a nice passing position here. As we come into the sort of 
right about the 10 minute mark. You know, just over five minutes remaining in this match. I feel like there's still plenty of opportunity for Fabrizio Andre to attack and to really stamp his authority on this match. Stop. I'm liking the sense of urgency from Fabian Ramirez here. He knows he's down. Oh yeah. And I think that from Ramirez, that's kind of smart Bye. as well. Bide his time a little bit, see what you know Andre has got and I'm sure we'll have our next judge's favor in just a moment. Be interested to see how that one goes. Judge's favor, red. Yeah, no surprise there for Bruce Andre gets the second judge's favor as we go into the final five minutes of this match. But there's a nicely timed guard pass straight again into this knee or belly kind of control but a very low posture could be looking to force Ramirez to turn once again great work from Fabian there to get back to the seated guard Escape artist is Fabian Ramirez. And I like the way that Luis Andre was pinning that wrist to the mat. But backs up and away. I feel like he's looking for something specific because he's actually given up control position to to kind of back away. And I feel like if he if he's in a position that he doesn't, it's not in the game plan. Let's say it's almost like he's giving it up. It's seems to be set on something can't quite work out what it might be though Fabian seems to really want to enter into the legs here now you know he's playing a, a little more coy early in this match didn't want to give strategy away but with only three and a half minutes remaining he knows that's the uh, kind of the Hail Mary he needs to achieve but Fabrizio Andre's passing just sounds so good out there that footwork is just something else really the way that he's able to maneuver himself around the legs Really impressive, and now get a little bit more of a, uh, a squeeze going from top here. You can see he's really maintaining contact between himself and Ramirez, going chest to chest. But Ramirez is seems intent on keeping that right elbow as close to the body as he can. If it comes away. May see, may see Fabrizio Andre look for an attack from here. I always feel like uh, Fabrice Andre is now just too calm with only two and a half minutes remaining in this match. Immediately start hopping over that bottom of the Two minutes and a half, Fabrice. Stop. Final two and a half. Ramirez slips out and away and is back up to his feet once again. Fight. And there will be a neutral restart. The center of the match. The center of the match, excuse me. Stop. Middle, same place. Just less than 90 seconds Bye. remaining in this match now. Good footwork there from Fabricio Andre going side to side. Good guard retention though by Fabian Ramirez. Trying to get his back off the mat and scoot his hips away. Just management wow. is absolutely key, but the pressure unrelenting on Fabrizio Andre. And nice the recovery though from Ramirez. And I feel that 
Andre is just being too kind here. He's actually giving Ramirez space to work. Yeah, he's really tenacious in the attempt, and then he gets where he wants to be and uh, wants to give it another go. Maybe he is looking for a very specific sequence here. Seems like the back is on his mind, but again, he wants to rack up a, a few sequences in a row. Uh, take down all the way to the back, maybe, is what he's hoping for. But with 30 seconds left, you would think he would uh, try and get one last look at a solid finish here. And maybe give too much away. You never know what Fabian has left in the tank. A flying attack may be in order for him. Well, there's less than, well, there's coming up only about 20 seconds approximately left in this match. The clock is ticking. If there is any time for a last ditch attack, it's now. And as the 10 second countdown begins, for Fabian Ramirez tries to get underneath the legs one more time. Go for what looks like a false reset up here, unable to get underneath the legs. And this one, Dre ends the match on top. The a uh, solid 15 minutes of action there. Our second match of the evening that will go to a decision. We'll take a look at some of the best moments from that match as the judges' scorecards are collected. And here we see a very animated Fabrizio Andre take to the mat, and it was the wrestling that was the real story. A lot of huge takedowns from Hokage out here, showing off the work he's been putting in ahead of ADCC, including this massive dump, almost a full suplex, and then again, looking for the back. Here is the second takedown, that just a spectacular hip throw, one of the best I've ever seen on who's number one. Love to see it. But I gotta say, I respect Fabian Ramirez for going down swinging this very effective outside heel hook attack. I mean, you could see that Fabrizio Andre was able to clear the knee line. It was a brief moment of danger, but dangerous it was. But the wrestling, such a factor for Fabrizio Andre in that match. And the referee will bring them back into the center so that we can make this official. And let's go to the judges after our 15-minute war. Your winner, by unanimous decision, representing Fight Sports, Hokage Fabrizio Andre. Winner by decision in his Who's Number One debut, Fabricio Andre from Manaus, Brazil. The second Fight Sports team member to win here tonight at Tezos Who's Number One. So, there is uh, Victoria joining Fabricio Andre. And now handed it over to Kendall Rusing for a word with our winner. All right, we are here with Fabrizio Andre. We're gonna have some helpful translation as well. So first off, congratulations. Second of all, that was some of the best wrestling and takedowns we've seen on the Who's Number One stage. I think five or more takedowns, really, really impressive. Do you think that you can take everyone down in your division? É, primeiro, parabéns pela sua vitória. E eu acho que eu nunca vi o wrestling tão bem feito, tanta, tanta queda bonita. Acho que foram mais cinco quedas. Você acha que você consegue derrubar qualquer um da queda de qualquer um? Uh, primeiramente, queria pedir desculpas. É, meu inglês não está tão fluente uh, e eu acabei ficando um pouco nervoso nas horas das entrevistas, mas é algo que eu venho é, melhorando a cada dia. Então, primeiramente, gostaria de dizer isso. Aí. E das quedas. Ah, sim. <risos> e uh, eu treino muito. Uh, não sei se eu posso derrubar qualquer pessoa, mas eu sei que a cada dez entradas uma pode ser que eu acerte. First, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm trying to work on my English. Uh, I'm, I'm improving, but very slowly. So I got kind of nervous to uh, do the interview. And second of all, I uh, I'm pretty confident that I can take a lot of people down. Out of uh, at least one out of ten tries, I'm gonna take someone down for sure. Amazing. I think we're gonna see more than one out of ten. Is there anything else you want to add before we go tonight? Quer falar mais alguma coisa? O que você quiser falar? Uh, gostaria de agradecer é, a todos que estão apoiando a gente aí. Hoje a gente teve uma perda muito grande, que é de um grande ídolo nosso, que é o Leandro Lô. Então, a gente está presta, prestando essa homenagem, uh, fazendo o que ele fazia nos tatames. E é isso. 
Uh, I want to say thank you for Flow Grappling to uh, give me the opportunity. And today we are, uh, we are having a very rough day for us uh, with the loss of an idol in Leandro Lo. So we're trying to do our best here to do what he used to do in the mats and uh, just to uh, pay homage to him. Let's hear one more round of applause for Fabricio. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. So that is it for our free prelims here at Tezos Husnum.